I'm Steve Mann and welcome again to Paper Classroom. We're now in the fibres unit of the level two technical certificate and in this particular tutorial we're going to talk generally about the different fibres that are used in paper making. In other modules later on we'll get more specific. Now one of the main types of fibre used in paper making is softwood. Wood, be it hardwood or softwood, probably comprises 90-95% of all the fibres used in paper making. Softwoods we use because the fibres are longish, so we put them in for strength. Hardwood fibres much shorter, we generally put them in to improve appearance. Non-wood fibres usually have specialist uses, things like cotton used in currency and security papers because of its durability, abaca used in uh, tea bag because of its extreme strength, uh, sorry, extreme length, which will give strength to the very uh, low weight sheets produced in tea bag paper, so 12, 14 grams per square meter. Then we have synthetic fibers, again, uh, very small volumes used in very specialist application in tea bags and in currency paper or other security papers. And then finally, we've got recycled fiber, recycled fiber. And uh, recycled fiber is, is a very up and coming grade of fiber. It's good because it's ecologically friendly. We're not having to chop down as many trees. We're not having to uh, use it, send it to landfill. And of course, it's economically favourable because recycled fibres are fairly cheap to buy and somebody has already worked on the fibre. You don't have to spend money working on the fibre, just cleaning it up. So let's talk about, about these fibres in a bit more detail. So here we have a softwood fibre, the conifers, or what I call the Christmas trees. So softwood fibres are pine, fir and spruce. Looking under a microscope, you can always tell which are softwood fibres because they have these little marks on them. If you look closely, they look like little windows. So we call them window cells or pit cells. And those are the main identifier for softwood fibres. As I said, we typically put softwood fibre in for the, to give the paper strength. The more crossovers each fibre has, the stronger the sheet will be. Softwood fibres are typically up to about four millimetres long, up to about 40 microns wide, so good for strength. This is uh, a section of a softwood tree, and um, although we always call them fibres, biologists would actually correct us and say they're not fibres, they're really called trachids, but uh, fibres are good enough for us. What you see here is identified two different types of fibre if you look closely. These fibres here, what we call late wood, have got very thick walls and a very small lumen. These fibres here, and also on this side, we call early wood. And these fibres have very thin walls and a much bigger lumen. And there's a good reason for this. In the spring or early in the year, when a tree just wakes up and the buds are appearing on the ends of the branches, the tree needs to get as much water as it can, as quickly as it can, out of the ground, up into the branches and to those buds. So in order to move water around quickly, it needs to create big, wide pipes. So it grows cells with a thin wall so that it's got a wide lumen. As we move on through the year, then towards the end of the year, autumn, late wood, late time, the water in the ground is a lot more difficult to get at because there's not as much of it. So the tree needs to have a much more powerful sucking power to pull out those little bits of water. And so in order to increase its sucking power, what it does, it creates tubes or fibres with much smaller holes the smaller the hole, the greater the sucking power. This is called capillary action. And how does it make a thin tube? 
it does it by making a very thick wall to the fibre. So that just shows you different types of fibre. And again, we'll, we'll look at that in a bit more detail in a moment. Okay, so here's a hardwood tree. So the two main hardwood trees used in paper making are eucalyptus and birch. Beech is also used, other, other hardwood trees are also used, but by far the two most common are eucalyptus and birch. The eucalyptus tree uh, was actually formed, sorry, well the hardwood tree in general, was actually formed millions of years later after softwood trees were around when the earth was first formed and uh, and so the hardwood trees are actually structurally more complicated one of the complications here's a hardwood fiber is that hardwood trees all have these things in and these are called vessel cells or uh, vessel elements and every species has its own particular type of vessel element. So it's almost impossible to identify hardwood fibres and some um, nonwood fibres from the fibre itself. The way you usually do it is by looking at the vessel element and that tells you what the tree is. So hardwood trees, typically two millimetres long, shorter, therefore fewer crossovers, therefore it'll give a weaker piece of paper. But you can distribute the fibres a lot more evenly. So this is great for improving the sheet formation or the appearance of the sheet. <clears throat> this is, uh, I've, I've touched on this briefly. This is how the tree rings are formed. I mentioned earlier that in spring, when a tree is just waking up, it needs to create fibres that will be able to move water quickly around volume, large volumes of water. So it creates fibres like this. A big lumen in the middle because you've got a very thin walled fibre. As spring turns into summer, there's less water around. The tree has to fight harder, it has to suck harder to get it out of the ground. And therefore, it makes fibres with thicker walls. So now the lumen is smaller and the smaller the lumen the greater the sucking power when we get to autumn when every all the crops are supposed to ripen there's hardly any water around so the the tree has to fight really hard to suck out what bits of water it can find and therefore it makes a really small lumen by making a really thick walled fiber now, obviously, you don't really get just those three types of fibre. But as you move throughout the year, you get a continual change in the type of fibre from this through to this. And that's here, from this through to this. Then in winter, nothing happens. And then spring comes, so a sudden change, and you get these big lumen fibres again. Then they tail off and then a sudden change. So when you chop a tree or chop a branch and you see the rings, what you're really seeing is this interface here between the end of one season and the beginning of the next. I hope that was clear. We also said we produced non-wood fibres. Uh, another term for these is annual crops. So things that we plant and harvest in the same year. Cotton would be a good example. We plant and harvest cotton in the same year. The cotton fibres or the seed hair that's longer than about eight millimetres goes off to the textile industry. The stuff that's less than eight millimetres we use in the paper industry. Um, abaca, which comes from a uh, the leaves of a plant of a tree that looks a bit like the, the banana tree, those can be eight, even 12 millimeters long. And the reason why we like to use abaca is because when we have extremely light paper webs, for example, tea bags that can be only 12 or 14 grams per square meter, 
we need these long fibers to have lots of crossovers to enable the sheet to carry through the paper making process and typical of abaca is this here this is the vessel cell or vessel element typical of abaca so when you see that you know that abaca is there <clears throat> We also said synthetic fibres. Again, synthetic fibres, small volumes, specialist uses. Synthetic fibres such as nylon and polypropylene are used. They're in tea bag again. Um, you mix synthetic fibres along with wood and non-wood fibres in the furnace for making tea bag. When it goes through the drying process, the temperature is raised such that these fibres weld together, they start to melt and they weld together, giving you the ultimate in wet strength properties. These type of fibres are also dyed and put in um, security papers. So only the mills know for any particular security element, only the mills know what colour they used or what colours they used and what ratio they used them in. So it's a very good security feature. And the final type of fibre of course is waste fibre. Good because we're not sending stuff to landfill, we're not chopping down as many trees, it's cheap to buy, somebody's already done the work on it so it's much cheaper to process. And there are five major grades of recycled fibre. And each of those five major grades is subdivided into 10 or more subgrades. So there are well over 50 different distinct grades of recycled fibre that you can specify. And we'll talk a lot more about recycled fibre in subsequent videos. Finally, I'd just like to... Uh, show you this table here it lists the different types of fiber source that we might have the typical or average fiber lengths widths and typical uses so coniferous softwood fibers used for strength in all types of paper really particularly printing and writing tissue and packaging hardwood trees short really used for putting for appearance therefore just for printing and writing straw has been used in some countries like spain and pakistan it's really difficult to handle it, it adds an interesting feature to a paper when you shake paper that contains straw you've almost got a metallic rattle to it esparto grass many years ago there were many mills making paper from esparto because it had the best appearance and it was ideal for printing. But as the printing processes got faster and faster, the strains on the paper got greater and it became impossible. Uh, the, the, the paper couldn't cope with the strains and it tore in the printing presses. So we had to abandon Esparto and start using longer fibres like softwoods and blending them with short fibre. Flax typically used in uh, people who make paper by hand for artists. Bagasse is the fibre left over from sugar cane production. And that's finding an increasing, at one time they used to burn it or throw it away. Now it's finding an increasing number of different uses in printing papers, in packaging papers, in tissue. Hemp, uh, again, specialist applications. It's used in cigarette paper and some uh, handmade papers. Abaca, also known as manila hemp, we've mentioned earlier in this video, used in tea bag paper, coffee filter paper, uh, even in, uh, in cigarette paper again. And finally, cotton. Cotton is good because of its durability. And that's two words you should always associate. Whenever you hear the word cotton, you should think durability. Whenever you hear the word durability, you should think the word cotton. Something about that almost always comes up in every level two exam, so it's a good pair of words to associate with. Well, I think that's all we need to talk about in this session. 
thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please feel free to leave any comments and uh, I look forward to uh, hearing from you.